County Council allows filming and photography at its public meetings, so please feel free to take pictures and tweet during the meeting. Can I ask, though, that everyone present turns their mobile phones to silent or vibrate whilst the meeting is taking place? There are please be aware this meeting is being live streamed and that a recording of the meeting will be available to view on the County Council's website. There are no fire alarm tests scheduled for today, so if the, building, if the alarm does sound, please leave the building by the nearest marked fire exit and assemble at the rear of the building by the lunch area. Before we begin today's business, I would like to invite the committee to join me in standing for a minute's silence in memory of Councillor Derek Giles, who passed away recently. Derek was a long-standing member of this committee and he will be sadly missed. Thank you very much, everybody. Item one on the agenda, <coughs> excuse me, is apologies for absence and declarations of interest. Would the Democratic Services Manager uh, report any apologies for absence? Thank you, Chair. We've received apologies from Councillor Jerry Bird, Councillor Ryan Fuller, and Councillor Simon King, and Councillors Goodliffe, Howell, and King, uh, and Hay are substituting, respectively. Thank you very much and welcome substitutes. Does any member wish to declare any disclosable pecuniary interests or non-statutory disclosable interests? No, thank you. Okay, so the first item, we are being asked to approve the minutes of the Highways and Transport Committee meeting on the 4th of October, uh, 2022 as an accurate record. If any member does not agree, would you raise your hands now? No, okay. We are being asked to, to note the updated action log. Members, you have in front of you the, a further updated action log, a copy of which has also been placed on the website. Can I ask any members if they have any questions on its content? No, thank you. Uh, brilliant, so item three is petitions and public questions. We have received three requests to speak, and I propose that we take these under the relevant agenda items. Item four, our first proper item is uh, Transforming Cities Fund, uh, the combined authority allocations. This item was published late due, due to the report being dependent on the decision taken by the combined authority board at its meeting on the 30th of November. And for that reason, I've exercised my discretion to accept this as a late item. Jeremy Smith, Group Manager of Transport Strategy and Funding will take us through it. Over to you, Jeremy. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, the Transforming Cities Fund is an allocation from government that the Combined Authority has benefited from to the tune of 95 million. Uh, the allocation covered a number of years and the final accounting comes at the end of March 2024. Um, the Combined Authority has identified underspends in the TCF budgets uh, um, of around three million pounds and is therefore allocating that money plus a little bit more to ensure that funding is allocated or is maximized from that funding source by the end of the funding period. This report sets out the schemes that the combined authority has allocated funding to, which have been worked up with the county council and Peterborough city council officers uh, in order to uh, yeah, get a program that can be delivered in the next 15 months. Um, the schemes in front of you, some of which have been pulled from other, or the, some of which may have been delivered from other budgets had combined authority funding through the TCF not been available. Therefore, there may be knock-on impacts 
positively in terms of more schemes brought forward in the next year than would have otherwise been the case. Um, so happy to take any questions on the schemes and uh, uh, request uh, committee uh, approve the, us entering into a grant funding agreement with the combined authority and the delivery of the scheme set out. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Thank you for your welcome. It's good to see the team scheme brought forward. Do I have any questions? Uh, Councillor Coots. I'm not sure if it's a question or not, but it's a celebration. Feel free to make a comment as well. It's just a comment, really. Um, I'd really like to celebrate um, this uh, allocation of funds, which I'm sure we all will, but also one particular aspect of it, the second in the list there on countywide speed reduction measures is something that um, I have got considerable concern for. As we all agree, I think, or most of us, that there is now overwhelming evidence of the benefits of introducing lower speeds and particularly 20 mile an hour speed limits in residential areas. And uh, these are in terms of reduced risk to pedestrians, particularly children involved in impacts with passing cars, and also a significant reduction in CO2 and NOx emissions. And making 20 mile an hour schemes simpler to develop is one of the joint administration's stated objectives. Um, what I wanted to comment on really was just a local comment from my area. Um, the, this Earlier this year, the City of Ely Council unanimously endorsed the idea of a 20 mile an hour zone for the whole of Ely, which I then raised with County Highways and officers have been investigating this. And I'm very grateful for the work that they've done. And a draft scheme for Ely is now ready to go out for consultation. And I'm personally excited that if some of if some of this transformation city's money were to be allocated to this uh, from the countywide speed reduction measures section, there would be a chance that this scheme will be in place within the next 18 months. And this will be a chance to make a substantial difference to the lives of residents in Ely South. So I'm just like to say I'm very grateful for all the work that's gone into the project so far. So thank you for that. Thank you very much, Councillor Coots. Uh, Councillor Hay. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd just like to ask the officer who decided on these particular schemes, because I've been um, town councillor now for eight years, and the first I knew about these was on the 15th of November, when I had an email uh, showing possible, possible draft plans for both uh, pedestrian crossings in Chatteris which I straight away came back and said, I can't see the reason for these. Just around the corner from where these two are supposed to be situated is already a zebra crossing. Three in such a small, small area and right next to a junction, I believe is just not necessary. So if you could tell me who, where, where the idea for these came from, I'd appreciate. Um, the provenance of the schemes that we're talking about, all of which have either been included in transport strategies that the council has adopted or yeah, and or have been worked up by projects teams for delivery as part of our integrated transport funding. So they have been schemes that are on the books. Now, there is a in terms of the time frames for the de development of this funding bid, the first discussions took place in July of this year, but the substantive discussion with the combined authority only really kicked off in September, October. So the schemes are yeah, what they are and deliverability was a key concern. So I will say that they have been agreed through county processes previously, but if there are concerns that you have, there will be opportunity to raise them through the the scheme design and uh, work that's taken forward. Could come back on that. You say that you've been in discussion with combined authority for some time. What about the town council? Surely the people on the ground are the people who are best able to say, yes, that is needed in that area, or no, it's not. And I think this is actually part of the process of developing schemes and um, yeah, there will be that opportunity with the town council and uh, the public to uh, consider this scheme and whether you, know, you want it to go ahead in the form that it's in as part of the development and implementation. So it is, you know, I would say, you know, in this context, you know, it is something that we've done quickly to react to a particular funding opportunity. And there will be opportunity for members to discuss the schemes that are local to them as they're brought forward. And that is not to say in that context that changes might not be made and you know, as part of the work to take them forward. It still brings me to the point that the town council 
received the email the same day as I did, 15th of November. We don't have a meeting till the first Tuesday of the month, so tonight. So we're being asked to um, do certain things here that the town council has had no input whatsoever on. There's plenty of things within Chatteris to do with highways that we would like money for. So why on earth weren't they consulted before you actually went in asking for money? I think the simply the simple answer to that is that the timescale for the process that we were working to with the combined authority did not allow time for detailed consultation with stakeholders. However, there will be time through the process to deliver to develop schemes for delivery on the ground next year for those discussions to take place. Thank you very much. Councillor Maguire. Thank you, Chair. I, my question is similar. I was going to, when Councillor Hay um, started off by asking how these schemes came about, I nearly was going to withdraw my question, but as it's progressed a little bit, the answer progresses, puzzled me a little bit. If I understand what Jeremy's saying, right? The, the 97 million pound, original 97 million pound city fund was to the CPCA, hence it was for them to determine what schemes would go forward. But I think you said in your presentation, Jeremy, through you, that the scheme was worked up, the schemes were prioritised by officers looking at existing um, schemes that were in our own, for instance, for in Cambridgeshire, not the Peterborough side of it, but there were our own schemes and you're sort of put those forward but I'm just wondering were members in any way members of this council were, were, were we involved at all in in agreeing that what, what should be priorities for us so for instance if I just use one as an example the county-wide speed reduction which Councillor Kutz has already mentioned yes we are, we've looked at in our policy now to look at 20 mile an hour schemes the decision to in, use this money means that obviously it's freeing up money elsewhere is what I'm spend it. But who decided we should use, look at it as a part of speed reduction as opposed to some other scheme? Well, that's what I'm not quite sure in my own mind. How did we get to these schemes? And you're, you seem to be saying that these could be later on, members can get involved and alter, but it could only be in regard to these schemes because these schemes are being determined by the CPCA at the end of last month. So these are the ones which are effectively set in stone, yes? In terms of the in terms of the prioritization of schemes it was not per se for the county council to prioritize schemes against its objectives it was the combined authorities objectives for delivery that were the relevant point now in a perfect world we would have had significantly more time to undertake more work with members but why can come back to the provenance of the schemes None of the schemes that we are talking about have just come out of the ether. They all have come out of adopted county council strategies and were under consideration for funding from, for example, the local transport plan integrated transport block, which obviously has a separate prioritization criteria. I think I would come back again to one of the key criteria being deliverability in the next um, 15 months, which actually does, as members will be very aware of, significantly narrow down the pool of schemes that uh, might be considered, simply because uh, you need to have done quite a lot of work to get schemes to a, a level. So what I won't say that it is a perfect process technically or politically, however, within the timeframes available, we chose schemes that were deliverable, were being worked up by teams in the council anyway for consideration for funding from other sources. Chairman, if I may come back, I thank Jeremy for that. I understand what he's saying. The only, the only thing is I would say is that this perfect world, if members ought to have been involved, then I think there's been, would have been times for instance. Councillor Maguire, I, I think it's important to say as well that this was um, against the Transforming Cities Fund criteria. So it wasn't necessarily our choice. There was a set of criteria that these schemes had to go by. And Chairman, think... with respect, um, you interrupted me, but yes, I've I was here in 2017, so I know about what the TCPF is about. That's not what I'm saying. But if if there was a decision by the County Council to put certain proposals forward to the CPCA as to which ones we felt were appropriate for us to, to bring forward, all I'm saying is that I, I don't think it's set 
it's appropriate to say in an ideal world we could have brought it to members. There's been plenty of time to bring it forward to members. These are the schemes we propose to put to the CPCA for adoption as our, what we would like to see our priority, which is presumably what Peterborough did when they said like, they'd like to see the Centre for Green Technology, to which they got half the money. That's all I'm saying is it's, please do not bypass members when there is an opportunity to bring it to members. Thank you, Councillor McGuire. Let's move on. Councillor MacDonald. Uh, thanks, Chair. It was just a couple of comments I wanted to make, which is, um, you know, after the fatality last year, it's very good to see that there will be an enhancements around the Addenbrooke's roundabout, although from what I understand, there, there was a conviction there for uh, dangerous driving. So it was not, as I understand it, not related to, you know, the structure uh, or any shortcomings at the roundabout, but it's good to see anyway. Um, and secondly, it's very good to see uh, measures around small streets, including school streets. Um, so going back to Max's comments about, um, you know, future schemes, uh, it would be really good if we could uh, see perhaps a larger budget if this comes around again on school streets. Uh, we've had people, uh, we've had residents come to committee and ask for that. And I think this uh, not only uh, this action, but possible future funding would be very welcome by residents. Thanks. Thank you very much, Councillor MacDonald. I totally agree. Councillor French. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I can only speak for Finland. I, I don't know the other areas. Uh, I welcome this money, but I believe the one at Chatteris uh, with this um, zebra crossing is the cart before the horse. I mean, I just find it absolutely bizarre that you've put this in without any consultation to the, the parish council, uh, the district council or anybody else. My, I've been working on the March Area Transport Study since 2018-22, and we have quick wins, which the combined authority has paid for, we'll get medium term and long term. Uh, I'm just disappointed, unless you've got another pot of money, um, we would like to crack on with our, um, the MATS stuff, if you've got any money. Um, I, I do welcome this, and I just hope there's, there's some more money, but I really think you need to be discussing and talking to, I think you've done it backside forward, I think you should have been talking to the parish council first. Thank you, Councillor French. Councillor Goldsax. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, yeah, like, like other members have said, it's money coming into the uh, county-wide, so why wouldn't we welcome it? Uh, quite two, two, two points, if I can, Jeremy. Uh, first and foremost, I'm assuming that if some of these schemes in Table 1 fall by the wayside, maybe for reasons that members have just been discussing, but if they fall by the wayside, there is a process and a procedure to follow to get other schemes in to possibly get hold of that money. Or part of the question too, is there a waiting list that didn't quite make this list that you would go to by default? I think it is probably fair to say in that circumstance, we would probably look to have a, a, a process that did allow some member scrutiny of potential yeah, replacement schemes if that eventuality does occur. Um, it is fair to say that there were other schemes that could have been considered, but either for deliverability reasons or scale reasons, you know, could not be funded from this source. Um, simply, you know, we could have put in, for example, a significant allocation in Wisbeach, but it would have taken rather too much money to be able to fund from this source. So, so there, there, are, there are opportunities, and we would, if those opportunities occur, look to have more discussions with members. I think the other thing to say is that some of the schemes that might be a little bit further down the list, you may see brought in front of you following member consideration for the integrated transport block funding, which is coming to committee in March, um, which some of these schemes might have been on that list if they had not been on this list. So, uh, so I think there is a I think there is a question for for officers in terms of well uh, yeah we may be working further down the list than we anticipated so i can't give a definitive answer but if there is that opportunity we would look to bring it to members to discuss very great thank, okay, thank you sorry. i'll keep it i'll keep it brief i'm new to this committee so i'm, I'm not going to go back over historical stuff because that would be unfair of me to do so Jeremy, I would urge you to find every opportunity to work with local members, regardless of the colours of rosettes. Local members have got local knowledge and can add value to all of these processes. And I think whilst we welcome the money in this case, I think there's a part of this process that appears to be missing, which is that local flavour and that local member input. 
Um, you can see by the, the feeling around the room. Um, I think that's something that maybe going forward certainly needs to be added to this through you, Chair. I'm going to hand over. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Chair. Just to add to Jeremy's uh, comments on uh, the previous question, I think uh, as Jeremy said at the outset there is some overprogramming within this uh, list as well. So we are anticipating uh, perhaps some of these uh, not coming forward within timelines, or indeed some el other elements of of the program as well. But it is uh, it is overprogrammed, and I think the message has been received uh, about member involvement. Um, I think. Time on this occasion, I don't think allowed it, um, but that's not an excuse for, for, for not engaging next time or indeed in the in the process of bringing these schemes uh, forward, as, as Jeremy has said. Thank you very much. Councillor Dupre. Thank you. I'm aware that we're all bringing our local interests to this meeting, as so often happens. Um, I didn't see in this list, but more alarmingly, not in any other um, either the proposals for doing something about the crossing at the A10 BP roundabout. Uh, it's a long time since we've heard anything on that, and I was wondering whether there was an update from anybody who could advise me on what was going on to make that actually happen. Councillor Dupre, I think you are starting to verge on parochial issues, aren't there? I'll allow Jeremy to answer it very quickly if he does have an update, but I think we should keep to the paper if possible. Um, probably just to say that obviously updates will be brought to committee at the time the technical work has reached them the right stage to and there will be further engagement at those stages. In the context of this programme, it was considered, but um, in terms of time delivery within the time scales and indeed the amount of funding needed, it wasn't felt that it was a safe scheme to bring forward um, in the context of government being likely to uh, cut off funding hard at the end of uh, March 2024 and the deliverability risk with their requirement for schemes to have been finished by that point. I think uh, simply the, the officer conclusion was that scheme would not be deliverable within the timeframes um, safely um, and uh, potentially within the budget envelope either. Fierce face on that one, Jeremy and David. Can we please go back and look at that again? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dupre. Councillor Sharp. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, basically, four points. Um, and I, I don't think any of us can you know, re resent the, the additional funds that we're getting for, for projects around the county, so I think that's welcomed. I, I'm On the um, 800,000 county-wide speed reduction measures, I'm assuming, or I'm asking the question perhaps, is that an additional amount on top of what we would normally be budgeting within our budget. Okay, fine. Um, we, we've got five items in Cambridge, which, um, and I, I still don't understand the crossover with the Greater Cambridge Partnership in terms of who was responsible for what, so on those sort of things. So that would be my second question. And then the third one, touching on one of those in there, is the Mill Road Cambridge bus gate, which presumably is if we because we still haven't formally decided that yet. So I'm a bit not 100% happy that that's included. Uh, and finally, um, more a comment. And um, I really did admire Councillor Coote's um, Dragon's Den pitch for the 20 mile an hour in, in Ely. Um, but obviously we've got on the agenda later on, we've got 20 mile an hour. I'm not against... Um, you know, at times we, we end up with too many silos of pots of money all over the place, which... Is not necessarily good, but um, I'm not sure where, where whether that that extra funding would go to 20 mile an hour zones or or, or, or whatever. But um, not that I don't want them nearly. But um, it was a very good pitch, Councillor Coates. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. I'm sure, Councillor Sharp, we will come on later to the scoring criteria and whether Ely will uh, rank highly on that one. We will uh, have to see going forwards. Do I have? Oh. There we go. Who have we got? Uh, Councillor Sanderson. Thank you, Chair. Um, just to pick up, up on Councillor Sharp's point, um, I'm sort of relatively new to this committee. Um, I, I do so occasionally, but I just wondered, how can um, we apply for transforming cities funding for those sort of school streets, um, smaller developments? Is, is that an option through this?
I'm looking around the room. I believe we will be uh, coming up with a list of what those are and probably people apply for it. David, did you want to add something or what the process will be for that? Yep, absolutely. We'll we'll be uh, making a, a call for demand for school streets and, and looking at how to best allocate the funding we have in, in a way where we can implement them in an equitable way where it delivers great benefit. I think there will be many demands for those. I know I can personally think of one or two, and I'm sure every other member will have a have a school street project of their own. Do I have any further questions or comments from members? No. In that case, then, uh, let, let's move to finalising this. So the committee is asked to delegate authority of the Service Director of Highways and Transport to enter into a grant funding agreement with the Cambridgeshire and Peterborough Combined Authority for the schemes in Cambridgeshire identified uh, for funding in this report and to approve delivery of the new Cambridgeshire elements of the 2023 to 2024 Transforming Cities Funds programme. Can I take that by affirmation or do I have any dissent? Carried by affirmation, I believe. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, moving on to item five. Uh, this is the business planning paper and the executive director of Place and Sustainability, Steve Cox, uh, will take us through this. Over to you, Steve. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, so this, this is the time of year we bring to you the proposed uh, business planning um, proposals uh, for the committee to consider uh, from a highways and transport perspective. Um, I won't go through the context, there's quite a lot uh, in the earlier sections uh, which describe uh, how we uh, have got to where we are in terms of business planning for next year. Um, as you'll have heard and remembered from last time, the, the budget gap uh, uh, earlier in the autumn uh, was of the order of £28 million or so, um, and that's been reduced through some of the work that's been taking place over the, the last couple of months, which are reflected in the business cases that have been brought to this committee and indeed have gone to other committees as well. One of the biggest pressures within uh, that overall gap has come from inflation, uh, inflation which has affected the cost of materials and some therefore delays in some projects and getting getting schemes going. Um, and of course, that's, that's something that's not uh, that's commonly known and, and impacting across the board. Um, the autumn statement, um, uh, you, you will have seen uh, uh, some outcomes from that uh, in terms of additional funding uh, for social care, for example, um, flexibilities around council tax, um, but we need to see the settlement when it comes um, a couple of days, as it usually does before Christmas. Um, so with regard to uh, matters relevant to, to this committee, section six sets those out, uh, pressures and risks uh, in there around materials, supplies and costs, they're adding pressures around bitumen and steel prices, for example, um, and we're seeing higher than average inflation uh, in highways uh, than we might see elsewhere across uh, some of the council services. Um, so, so the proposals which are detailed in um, six par paragraph 6.5 uh, and have business cases uh, included as part of the appendix to the paper, uh, I won't go through them all in, in detail, um, but important to note, uh, some of them, I think, the, there's a capitalisation uh, that's taking place of some of the revenue costs uh, for uh, highways uh, over the next two years. Uh, which is freeing up revenue. Uh, the intention is after those two years to turn that back to, to revenue. There's no reduction in spending power as a result of, of doing that. Um, in order to meet those inflationary pressures, uh, there's £1 million being uh, allocated to be used uh, to do that from uh, additional highways investment. And then there are uh, several areas that, that are detailed in 6.5, uh, weed killing, um, uh, uh, proposals uh, to review the winter maintenance uh, network um, uh, uh, as a second. Uh, street lighting, uh, this is an investment in LED street lighting, uh, which will see significant savings uh, down the line for a £13 million capital investment up front. Uh, the figures uh, are quite uh, significant in, in future years. Uh, a materials rec recovery facility uh, as well, an investment that will see savings uh, down, down the line. So I won't go into any more detail. That, those are the proposals that we're seeking uh, comments from committee that will then go forward as part of the business planning into, into next year. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Steve. We are obviously living in very difficult times given the current inflation rates, and that does not... Um, stop at the door of highways. Um, do I have any members though that wish to ask any questions or have any comments for debate? Councillor Mills? 
thank you. Um, Steve just mentioned the uh, 12 million pounds for the LED programme. And I wonder whether we can uh, just make sure that we compare notes with our district council colleagues, for example, uh, because I know at South Cams we had uh, a similar programme uh, nearing completion now, but there were some issues with the deployment of that, and there may well be some useful learnings to uh, to look at that. And I think the other uh, question that I've got, if I can share, um, is just to ask about this uh, supply chain inflation that we're suffering. And, and I know that the uh, government forecast is that there will be a, a, a falling away of in, inflation, but I just wonder whether that's really um, our experience and what, what sensitivity analysis that we've got on, on specifically for uh, highways and transport in the, in the budget. Thank you. I can come in there just to say that we are working actively with the supply chain with our major contractors to keep that under um, monitoring the process as it's going. We saw a marked increase initially, but that is leveling off now. And we haven't, so since the October report, we haven't seen a marked increase in that percentage increase in the inflation rate that we were seeing initially. So it does feel like it is settling, but it's not something that we're taking the eye off at the moment. I would also add that it's something the materials recycling centre should help give us further certainty over using our own materials there. Uh, Councillor McDonald. Uh, just a quick point, uh, Chair. Um, so I noticed on the, uh, the winter review that um, we are currently covering something like 34% of the network, which is higher than the average. So that's good. But I'm sure everybody in the room, you know, would welcome the, cri the criteria because we need to obviously make sure that those areas which historically we know suffer and therefore require um, gritting and, and winter maintenance are really going to get that service. So um, I'm sure officers are looking at that and that's very important. Thank you. You're right, Councillor McDonald, the winter gritting service is so important, so many of our residents that we do need to make sure that that is has done very well. Councillor Dew. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, it's just following on from... Um, um, some of the previous questions about supply chain. I'm not so worried about the inflation because it is what it is, but uh, I know in my uh, day job, a lot of my uh, clients are suffering from lack of supply chain, either the inflation is the, the visual uh, um, showing of it, either there is a shortage of certain uh, uh, areas, uh, for example, not quite in this, but uh, motor parts at the moment are invariably, you know, between three and six months delayed. Um, are there similar delays in in the time scales there that could cause um, issues, not just on the inflationary fact, but the simple fact that the materials aren't available? I mention that purely because I've had a couple of issues in my division where it seemed to be taking forever, but the truth was you couldn't get hold of the materials. Is that still a factor you think will be there going forward? Thank you. Yeah, I don't know whether I'm on. Yes, I am on. Oh, he's there. Oh, sorry, I couldn't see my red light. Um, yes, that is. it is something that's affecting us at the moment, mainly in the electrical components for street lighting at the moment. We're seeing some um, delays in getting those um, elements to us. Um, but again, that is something that we're looking at with the supply chain to get that forward plan of where that those holders are likely to be, but also to try and secure supply sooner in the process so that we build in that delayed. Obviously, we're in a little bit of a catch up situation at the moment, but in that forward plan process, we'll be able to get ahead of that as much as possible. But it does depend on the availability of those those elements. Go Just on, a little Jeff, supplementary on uh, something I picked up recently, um, for example, Alco uh, braking systems that are fitted to a lot of caravans in the UK are made in one factory in the Ukraine and nowhere else in the world. And we've seen things like chips for vehicles being made in certain parts of China. Are there any issues that like that that we're likely to come across or is that outside our remit on this one, do you think? My understanding is the electrical components issue is a, is a, related to the Ukrainian situation um but again again it's not it's not just what's processed there but what would normally transport through the ukraine is being affected as well um but it tends to be just the electrical components at the moment but again as i say we're keeping an eye on that 
Thank you. Yes, from what I understand, a lot of electrical components is actually China with their lockdown as well. That, as you mentioned, there's chip shortages across the board, which make things very challenging. Uh, but we are working very hard to make sure that it doesn't impact our programs. Councillor McGuire. Thank you, Chair. Um, a couple of points. One, one. Well, one's a question. The LED um, replacement program, which I'm personally in favour of, uh, as right approach. But well, I'm trying to remember, given back to the days of when we first started the, the PFI bid, um, PFI scheme for our street light replacement, and one of the things we were pushing hard then was for LED to replace the original type of lighting that we had. So under this current proposal, is this something which is right county-wide, or was there a particular area where we didn't actually replace the existing street lighting with LED, which I've always been in favour of. I haven't been involved in that technology myself. Um, so that's the first question. Um, the, uh, the other, well, the other one is a point I wanted to make. I, I appreciate that offices have prepared, generally prepare the paper. And I was looking at the overview and I'd missed this on a previous occasion. Um, and in 1.2, it says right in the middle of it, um, this followed a tumult tumultuous, I can't even say that word, tumultuous period following the fiscal event in September 22 under the previous government. I didn't know we'd changed the government. So we hadn't got a previous government, it's the existing government, even if the leadership and the, the offices in that government have changed. So just watch me. You know, I don't want to be political, too polit political about it, but it, it wasn't a previous government. Um, there was another point, but it escapes me at the moment, Chairman. I, um, so if I may, I'd like, if I may come back to that, one, I will recall what the other point I wanted to make. Yeah, of course, Councillor McGuire. I'm not sure we really want to dwell too much on what happened under the current government. Um, so I think it's probably best that we skip that one. But I was so, come thanks to you. Um, I wasn't trying to question as to what I happened, but it was just the term previous government. Okay, thank government. you, Councillor McGuire. Uh, Sue Proctor, the service director, do you want to come back on the street lighting issue? I would, I would like to come back. I don't know the answer to your question, Councillor Maguire, on whether it's the, the whole of the county. I understand it is the whole of the county that's going to be affected by the LED replacement. Wherever we have not got them, we will be looking at replacing them with LED lighting. We are working with the PFI contractor at the moment to work out how we can amend the contract with them to allow that to happen in a reasonable space of time um, we as i understand it down we had alan hitch available to support this item do we know if he's on online yeah. oh he's here sorry alan there you go alan <laughs> i wonder if rather than me try and answer that question if you could please um so sorry to answer your question um during the pfi contract we didn't actually replace the current lanterns with led so what we've done over the period is we, we had a period where we replaced um, all the street line columns that we'd adopted from new developments, et cetera. So that was 3,650. So that was in 2018. And then from 2016, all new developments have had LEDs installed as part of our specification. So this project is to replace the columns that we replaced as part of the, the PFI contract, the lanterns, sorry, lanterns only. Chair, I could just say thank you for that, because that's, that's the memory jog I needed. I now recall the other point I wanted to make, if I may take it now. In the recommendations, um, I'll just stand down so I've got them. It talks about us in B and C commenting on and endorsing. Now, I know this is something we've gone through in other committees where we're looking at the particular um, divisions uh, part of the budget. And we had effectively agreed that we wouldn't be using the word endorse because I don't think it's appropriate to be asking at this stage for any committee to be actually endorsing a budget, which is really at the end of the day, the joint administration's budget. So as the wording was changed on others, I think it was children and young people's words, certainly we didn't change it. Oh, I'm getting a shake of the head, so I'm trying to remember from that. But uh, otherwise, if it, you know, it's, it's fine for us to accept the proposals that are going forward as part of next year's budget. But I don't think it's appropriate. And I certainly I would not want it whilst I'm happy to comment on, but I'm not at this stage happy to endorse what is actually in fact a, a budget proposal from the administration. I'm hearing Councillor Maguire that it is the same across all of the different committee papers. Um, 
Um, I, 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 this consistent wording, Councillor Maguire, for all committees, I, I understand the point. It, the recommendation is asking for the committee to endorse the proposals as part of the consideration of the council, council's overall business plan. Um, so it's going on to the, I, in, in essence, going on to the next stage uh, of business planning preparation process. I'm going to go slightly out of order now, if it's allowed. So I'm going to go to Councillor Goodliffe, who's on Children's and Young People, for, for a little bit on that one. Thank you. Um, it wasn't mentioned at Children and Young People. I think uh, those who felt they didn't want to endorse just abstained or voted no on this item. Thank you, Councillor Goodliffe. Councillor Goldsack. Thank you. Um, I welcome the report. It must have been a difficult report to write, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, but my question uh, with a specific example is what consideration has been given to spending areas to stop demand for spend in future? Let me give you the example, the GRIP programme. When you live in a rural or semi-rural environment, often the roads around our lovely villages are not uh, edged with pathways. They are edged with uh, turf and the water cannot get off the highway if the grip program is not maintained and cut. Uh, I live in a lovely rural Fenland village uh, on the edge of East Cambridgeshire and West Suffolk and we haven't seen a grip cut for two to three years now minimum, two to three years. Um, and lo and behold the recent heavy rains are coming out on those roads and they're turning them into an absolute lottery because you don't know the potholes that are worsening because they're sitting in water beneath the roads because the water can't get away. Those potholes will then need repairing because they're made worse by the fact that a simple grip cut could have avoided that. So that's just an example of macro micro really, you know, spending some money to save spending some money on other things. The report doesn't really show how far that's gone in there. So I'd welcome the officer's discussion, A, using the GRIPS as an example for an update on the GRIP program, because it's absolutely vital in the way of managing the, the rainwater, which this week, by the way, will be frozen, which gives us another problem. Because the other issue there is, as we mentioned, I think it was Councillor Milnes or, or, or uh, uh, was talking about the winter road program. You know, we've got a real issue out there with, with what we're facing this week, and I wish everybody good luck with that. But I think the 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 other part of this is wider than just the GRIP programme. Could you tell us what's been done to spend to prevent additional and further spend on, su on such items, please? Thank you, Councillor Goldsax. Firstly, I will say that in this report, it does say that obviously where there are problems surrounding water, that, that uh, things will still be cut back and still will be treated um, and that that won't be excluded from this. This is about weed killing, but not where there are issues. Um, and we will still very much be open to reports of those. And if you do have issues in your area, please do make sure they are reported. Uh, but uh, with Sorry, with, 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 with respect, Chair, and through you, because you're answering the question, I actually wrote to uh, Sue this morning on a very issue of a wretch of road in our area that's probably considerably worse because of a lack of grip cutting to get the water off the road. So it, it absolutely is a live and pertinent issue. When you, And, you know, I live in the village of Islam. There are plenty of Islam-like villages right across our county. Not It's not unique to East Cambridgeshire. Thank you very much, Councillor Goldsax. To avoid getting too parochial, I will let Sue answer. But yeah. uh, And thank you very much for raising those issues because they are incredibly important. But okay. Sue, did you want to answer that yes, quickly? Yes, thank you. I'm sorry, Councillor Goldsack, I haven't got to read your email from this morning and I'll, I'll deal with that as and when I do. On the GRIP programme in, in its entirety, there is a, a large programme of work that is being done on drainage and highway drainage, particularly across the county, which has been led by a two-year programme of gully emptying and cleaning and clearing. And we've seen some benefits of that program moving forward. And we are following that through with um, the a, a program of um, relatively small, quick wins on drainage interventions in areas where we've identified there are issues. And there's a program of around 50 schemes that will be being delivered in the next few months and into 23-24. Part of that program includes that revision of that RIP or the reintroduction of that grip cutting process that has been, has fallen away, but needs to be 
re-emphasized within our processes of managing drainage from the highway so that is running alongside the proposals that are put forward here the allocation to drainage is there within the budgets um, but the proposals that are put forward here are for those savings that are being suggested for implementation in addition to those works that are already going on on the looking at highway maintenance and the general condition of the highway and surface treatments and dealing with potholes, that's ongoing work that's continuing within the services at the moment. Thank you very much, Sue. Councillor MacDonald. It was just a quick comment to follow up from Mark's comment, which is uh, the, the attention to the grips is one of the most cost effective things we can do. It doesn't cost as much money. And the upside benefit, whether it's the potholes or the flooding or ice prevention, is it, it's probably the most cost effective thing we do in highways. And I take Sue's point that it, it will be taken on board. Um, and generally, LHOs have done a good job. But if we can keep it up on the agenda, I think that would help. Thank you very much, Councillor McDonald. Noted. Councillor Shaler. Just a very big, quick, uh, quick comment. The... Um... The price increases are, are quite incredible. The on bitumen products, we're looking at 35% increase. So I think officers are doing an, an amazing job with incredible pressure. On the point about spend to save, I think the LED lighting program is a perfect example of that. We could have cut back and kept the old lighting stock, but the, the faster we move to LEDs, this will actually cost, uh, it will save us millions and um, also, satisfy our agenda for um, climate change as well. So I, I think that would be commended. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Shaler. Councillor Sharp. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I've got two points. Um, one is um, when, when Steve was introducing the paper, um, I wasn't sure if he, he said capitalisation of revenue items or whether it was capital capital spend to make revenue savings later was the first point and the second one being i'm not being parochial i'm being very specific um if i look at page 53 on the table of highways um maintenance and that's the opening budget i must admit we're looking at just over 10 million in current year um the proposal for the net budget for 23 24 is is 7.2 so i just wonder if there i'm missing something there in terms of um because obviously with inflation that's going to be a a much um quite a quite a, a big decrease Thank yeah you. we'll come back on the on the first point i'm just trying to find the paragraph uh but it's the capitalization of four million yeah it's in there i'll, I'll find it four million pounds of the revenue is being capitalised, so we're saving the revenue and using capital instead, but only for two years. Uh, and the intention, all being well, is to revert that back to revenue at that point. Thank you, Councillor uh, Sharp, and thank you, uh, Steve. Um, does anybody else have any further questions? No, brilliant. I would like to say myself as well how happy I am to see us bring forward the LED replacement program. I think it's one of those brilliant things that one saves us so much money in the short term but is also a far bigger piece of our our green agenda and making sure that we are saving energy and working towards carbon neutrality but it astonishes me that this has not been done sooner actually uh, like i see council mcguire nodding his head there that it, it feels like a complete no-brainer i also do want to draw attention to the highways recycling and the work that john munslow has been doing on that one it's another fabulous piece of work in using our roads essentially as quarries to to save us having to use virgin aggregate um in all of our things and at the same time also saving us money so i do want to just take time to to, to thank officers for their work in one saving money but doing it in a way that is actually better for the environment and and better full stop so it's not all just about money saving so thank you very much for all of your work on that one um so let, let's move on then so the committee is asked to note the progress made to date and the next steps required to develop the business plan for 2023 to 2028 
B, comment on and endorse the budget and savings proposals that are within the remit of the committee as part of the considerations of the council's overall business plan. C, comment on and endorse the proposed changes to the capital program that are within the remit of the committee as part of consideration of the council's overall business plan. And D, note the updates to fees and charges for 2023 to 2024. Uh, just, just one very quick comment, Chair, sorry. In view of Councillor Maguire's comments, and I agree with him, can, can we take them separately? Uh, yes, I'm happy to yeah. do that if we want to. Um, so part A is to note the business plan made to date and the next steps required to develop the plan for 2022 to 2023. Can I have those in favour? Raise their hands, please. Okay. So I believe that's unanimous, actually, and carried. Part B is comment on and endorse the budget and savings proposals that are within the remit of the committee as part of the consideration of the Council's overall business plan. Those in favour, raise your hands, please. Okay, those abstaining? Uh, two abstaining, I believe, um, and those against? Okay, I believe that's carried. Thank you very much. Part C is comment on and endorse the proposed changes to the capital programme that are within the remit of the committee as part of the consideration of Council's overall business plan. Those in favour? Abstaining? Is that three abstaining? Uh, Councillor Sharp, are you abstaining or? Yeah, you are abstaining. Okay. And those against? Uh, okay, I think I believe that's carried again. And part D to note the updates, fees, and charges 2023. Those in favour? Okay, I believe that's um, <laughs> unanimous. Thank you very much there. Some, some interesting numbers going on there. But I think I believe those are all carried. So thank you very much. Um, on to item six. Uh, item six is a report on civil parking enforcement. And David Allett, the Assistant Director, um, will take us through this. Nicola Gardner, Parking Policy Manager, is also joining us via Zoom in support. So David, over to you. Thank you. Hi everyone, uh, this is an update on civil parking enforcement, uh, which provides powers for local on street parking enforcement and administration. Uh, the County Council would need to apply to the Secretary of State via the DFT to receive these powers. And in line with September 21 H&T's decision, we've been preparing applications to apply for these powers for Fenland, Huntingdonshire and South Camps uh, and developing the CPE schemes and associated legal agreements for those authorities. In terms of funding to date, the county has indicated that we're supportive of facilitating CPE, but would need to be cost neutral and districts have been making their own arrangements to fund the setup costs and any operational deficits, in some cases drawing upon grant funding. The most significant update that I bring today is a funding update in discussions with our partners in and the other transport organisations, being the Combined Authority and the GCP. We're discussing a contribution of 150k per participating authority to assist with the design and digitization of remedial works. Um, these stages in the report, I apologise, I refer to them as unforeseen. That's not the case. They were unbudgeted. Um, what this contribution would do from the tri transport authorities, uh, transport organizations uh, would help in providing an equal contribution uh, to each participating district. I would add also that this, whilst it's a time restricted offer, is open to East CAMS. To date, this is, these aren't powers that East CAMS are, are, are pursuing, but if that position was to change, um, that offer would be open to East Cams of that funding contribution. Um, and the rest of the paper uh, in terms of uh, 2.32 sets out the respective stages of the work and time, time scales. Thank you. Thank you very much, David. And I do welcome that this is offers also open to East Cams. That's very good to hear. Uh, let's start off with Councillor Goodliff. Thank you. Uh, really looking forward to hopefully us being able to address particularly some of the parking issues. Um, relating to 3.4, and you'll forgive me for mentioning children and young people, or maybe not. Um, it says no significant implications. My inbox would like to disagree with this. The amount of uh, 
emails I get from parents, particularly around schools and uh, the implication on safety for children and young people uh, cycling and walking um, and, and parking issues would greatly disagree that there are no significant implications. I'm glad to see that this would have positive implications for the safety of the children and young people in Cambridgeshire. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Goodliffe. And I think our discussions about school streets earlier do demonstrate just how important parking and driving around schools is and how important it is for our residents. Councillor Sanderson. Thank you, um, Chair, as you as you know, and, and David and Nicola know, I've got a number of questions about this, which you some or many of which you've actually um, kind of answered by email, but I just wanted to, to sort of raise those points again. Um, I think we need to establish um, the scope of this £150,000 that we're getting. Um, I understand that the CPCA are um, still deciding what they want to do, how they want to contribute. And I think that's something we need to firm up um, as much as possible, which I'm, I'm sure you're doing. Um, I think once funding's formalised, um, I think we need to get back to our district council partners. Um, as we heard earlier, sometimes that message um, can get lost when we're, we're doing projects. Um, and I understand that we're already working with Milestone to commission the remedial design work for Fenland, um, as the TRO view there is in um, almost at completion stage. Um, my colleagues at Pathfinder House have pointed out very helpfully at um, paragraph 2.19 that um, I think it says something to do with the words um, it should not be budgeted, they should be um, unforeseen, if we can just make that adjustment to that line there. Um, and I think we need to clarify how the costs are attributed between various authorities and who will actually um, shoulder those, those costs. Um, and I think my final two points really are, um, can we just clarify how much is being spent on the actual designs for these schemes um, and really what makes up that operational deficit that um, has been mentioned in the report that the county council will help, help to cover i think if if it's for signs and lines i think that's probably a good thing i think it's for the if it's for the enforcement deficit um that's i think will be less well received so if you could clarify those those points i'd be very grateful thank you yeah. thank you councillor sanson i'll hand over to david allett to answer those thank you chair um it, it, indeed, the uh, GCP and county have uh, identified the funding and we remain in discussion with the CPCA whilst uh, the principle has been discussed. And as part of that decision uh, discussion, um, we will refine the terms and con conditions precisely of that funding. Um, in terms of, uh, um, we, we remain in close dialogue with the officers from each authority working, and I absolutely accept the point that that needs to continue. Uh, regarding the comment about the design costs being unforeseen, um, it is the case that they were unbudgeted. We did know about this stage. It was a perhaps a misunderstanding over who was covering those costs, and the design costs are in that region of the design and the digitization um, phase is in that region of 150K. Um, which is the which is helped to inform the scale of the contribution uh, on on offer. Um, I know in the past um, Nicola has produced a, a sort of a financial summary in terms of where the funding is coming from from each authority and how that's basically expected to um, play out and, and and where the deficit is. So perhaps if it's helpful, I could circulate that that note again and ensure that it's absolutely up to date. Thank you, um, Chair. Thank you, David. I think that will be very useful. You just clarify where we are with um, a lot of these points. And if you're having any difficulties with the CPCA, um, there's probably a few people in this room that could move things along if, if possible. But thank you. Thank you, David and Councillor Sanderson. Councillor Dupre. Thank you. I very much welcome the extension, the the, the offer of uh, an extension of setup costs to East Cambridgeshire District Council should it choose to join the rest of the country in adopting civil parking enforcement. I note that the offer is time limited and I'd just like to say that it would be really helpful if that time limit could be extended until at least uh, the middle of May uh, or the end of May this coming year. Thank you. 
That was an entirely political comment, nothing to do with this committee. It was an entirely political comment about the elections in May and uh, a member of, of East Cams is not there. It's up to you whether you accept it or not. Councillor I just Goldstein, want to people I think to we'll leave it there and move on. I'm not going to ask the officer to answer the reply to the question. And we will so move you on. agree with me. Thank I, you. I did not say that, but thank you very much. Councillor French. Um, thank you. Thank you. I, I do have a couple of points. Um, on two point... Sorry. It goes on from this 2.18. Unstable. Yeah, Fenland do have £400,000, which has been committed. Um, it came out of the million pound funding for four towns, and they all agreed to give £100,000 towards this, uh, which we were grateful to receive. Now, but that money is time limited. We've been talking about civil parking enforcement, not just since last year, but the year before. Uh, my concerns is on the slippage of this, because the, the actual funding runs out in April. 24, but this is not going to be complete until May 24. Have your officers, I have two questions on this, have your officers uh, been in discussion with the combined authority? Um, I, I realise most of the work will have already been done, but are we going to lose any money with this two, three months slippage? That's my first question. My second question um, over the page in 2.2, a draft, draft agreement is due to be completed by the end of December 2022, approved by Fenland in January 2023. Having spoke to uh, my officer this morning, um, he's now waiting for the third draft, bearing in mind we're the 6th of December now, it's supposed to be completed by December. He was promised the third draft by the end of last week, and he still hasn't got it. So how many times are we going to have a slippage and slippage? David, over to you to answer those questions. Uh, do, yeah, I, I understand the point and we, we are, um, discussions will continue with the CPCA and, and officers. We're talking about a, a set of powers that would exist in perpetuity and it's important that the administration of those powers and the financial risk is appropriately uh, dealt with. Um, I, 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 I know the uh, document that's required to go out to help to move the legal agreement on, and we will be able to get that out, that out promptly. So uh, certainly further discussions required on the funding. We appreciate that the grant from the CPCA is time bound, and that has informed the way that we've programmed CPE uh, to ensure that that funding opportunity can be taken advantage of. If, if I may come back, um, the point that I'm making on this agreement do, uh, document, he was promised it last week. He hasn't got it. We're now the 6th of December. It's supposed to be completed uh, and going to Fenland Cabinet, I believe, in January. So when when is the document going to be received by Fenland? Councillor French, I think we will get back to you on that one. Um, but obviously, it is to be signed next year, as you have said. So we do have a little bit of time to get it through. Um, but I'm sure officers are working diligently across all of these and a very complicated subject. Uh, Councillor Maguire. Thank you, Chair. Chair, I, I, I probably I need help on this. I think I'm finding it difficult to understand how this, fund, this funding, particularly the additional funding, works. If we look at 2.1, it says this will require an up to 150k commitment from each body, brackets 50k per funder for each district. Now that seems to be inferring to me, that, and maybe this is correct, but I just didn't understand it, that the GCP is going to make a 50k uh, available for each district. I didn't think the GCP was able to spend money outside of uh, Cambridge and South Cambridgeshire, so I don't understand how they can make a 50k contribution to, for example, hunting this year. Am I misunderstanding this? David, to, to explain it. Uh, the GCP is able to invest in the travel to work air within the GCP's travel to work area, so it does come with some geographical restrictions, but um, on, the, on uh, in terms of key commuter routes, um, it's within the scope of what the GCP is able to fund. And I just add to that, I do welcome the GCP looking at the slightly wider area and, and helping some of our other uh, 
local councils around in in their transport aims. Councillor, sorry, could I come back to Jim? Is that enough? Is David saying that's an affirmative? The GCP can actually help to fund in the other districts. Oh right, didn't realise that. Sorry. That's right, Councillor G. Yeah, no, uh, following on from that, it's interesting to see that the GCP doing that because, of course, they're doing exactly the same with the bus uh, routes that they're doing because they are coming across into Huntingdonshire, which presumably would have the same effect. So uh, I, I welcome the fact that they are going slightly outside the remit of South Camden City, so that's good. The bit I wanted to uh, pick on, though, was... Um, in the past, we'd asked questions about the funding, especially around South Cams, and the suggestion was that uh, the council itself was funding um, South Cams uh, for this. It's, I'm pleased to see that it's made quite clear in there that is the great Cambridgeshire partnership that is, in fact, doing that. may not be fair on the rest of us that we don't have access to that for them to fund it for us, but uh, it is as it is. So I'm pleased to see the clarity on that and uh, looking forward to all going ahead and uh, getting it in place other than in Fenland which hopefully will fall into your course. Thank you. Let's hope so. Councillor Sharp. Thank you, Chair. Um, like others mentioned, I am concerned about the delays um, because looking at the committee from last year, um, there's a delay certainly in terms of Huntingdonshire of about a year um, from where it was originally, it was October 23, we're now looking at October 24. Um, it does concern me the way the funding's being done because it, when it suits the GCP to spend money outside its boundaries, it does it with no democratic control by those within councils outside South Cams and Cambridge City. And this is my big beef with GCP all the time. It's not democratic, it's undemocratic. Um, Excuse me, Councillor Sharp. I, I would object to that fact. I think okay. we all know that it is democratic. Well, and I think Councillor Mills sitting on the, the GCP uh, board as a substitute would very much object to that being democratically elected. Uh, uh, we have a democratic voice as the county council on the GCP. We're one of the three voting members. Well, we're going to have to agree I, to disagree. I'll allow you to continue, Councillor Sharp. Thank you. Um, Therefore, um, looking at in terms of costs, I mean, uh, it does concern me the way the costs are, are going, because that was one of the um, reserva massive reservations East Cam's had about it. And we're talking about it, it was the, I forget the, the point it was on Huntingdonshire with the hidden costs or, or unforeseen costs. So is that the correct? Unbudgeted. Unbudgeted. Sorry, David. Thank you. Um, so, so, so that was a big concern there. And and I think it would take a lot more than 150k to set it up. Um, so, yes, I, I, I've got grave concerns about the um, the, the way it's costed, and, and we, we seem to be getting different costs coming out um, all of the time. Um, certainly, looking back at a year ago's paper, um, and the, and the time scales just seem to be slipping. Thank you, Councillor Sharp. It is indeed a, a very large piece of work. So it is. Uh, Understandable that there are many complexities to it for us all. Do I have anybody else? Councillor Sanderson. Thank you, Chair, for letting me have another, another go. Um, just my final query on um, paragraph 2.19. Um, so it appears that the TRO queries are not the main contributors of the, um, the works that are being outsourced. Um, the main cost seems to be, be the remedial works design packages. Um, is it how accurate will the quotes be for this? You know, my concern is the costs will will escalate a lot more. Um, and is there actually a need to do that to do this work? I, I'll provide relevant uh, caveats in the in the paper on the assumptions that sit behind uh, behind the cost. But yes, there is a need to to do this work. It's a, a a prerequisite of the application is that we have to demonstrate that all the lines and signs are of an appropriate standard to allow for enforcement. Thank you, David, and thank you, Councillor Sanderson. Uh, Councillor Mills, I thought I'd got away with that. Can I ask the officers what the uh, difference in cost between maintaining the signs and lines for police enforcement versus civil parking enforcement? I, I mean, it's substantial, really. We have to go through a uh, we have to go through a 
a blanket process of assessing all signs, lines and orders and ensuring that they are uh, fit to take on the new powers. Whereas if you look at what's there now, you've got the police enforcing based on uh, based on what's there now. And, um, and, 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 and that is reported on a sort of defect by defect basis. So um, uh, the difference is we're having to deal with all the signs, lines and orders in one big blanket um program which is not how it would uh, not how it would be dealt with um under under police enforcement brilliant thank you very much if i have no further questions or comments let's move this one on so the committee is asked to a note the content of the cpe update and b note the council council's one-off contribution to support authorities implementing cpe in 2.1 to 2.6 can i take it by affirmation or do i have anybody wishing for a vote by affirmation it is thank you very much oh brilliant so that's passed so we come on to agenda item seven which is um, a report on the updated 20 mile an hour schemes and David Allen, Assistant Director, uh, will once again take us through these. Thank you, David. Thank you. Uh, so this uh, uh, provides an update on the 20 mile an hour process and the work of the 20 mile an hour working group. Uh, of course, Jeremy's update earlier was positive about additional funding available through Transforming Cities, which provides an opportunity for more 20 mile an hour schemes and perhaps a uh, sort of top down approach to facilitate this uh, bottom-up um, application process. Um, the paper reflects the discussions to date at h and and through the 20 mile an hour working group to establish a prioritization criteria for 20 mile an hour. And we bring that prioritization criteria discussed for agreement today that's attached as Appendix A. We've also discussed a policy change Whilst expected speed reductions will remain a consideration for 20 mile an hour, uh, we are effectively proposing that uh, the policy removes the requirement for a 24 mile an hour mean speed requirement. Um, we also provide an update on the first wave and the next stage of the uh, applications for funding based on that prioritization approach. So we would go live with an application process in February with a period between February and April um, for applications, prioritization between May and June, reporting to committee in the summer and moving to implementation from August onwards. Also in the report, I reflect on a recent motion which requested that um, uh, at full council endorsed it that we design all new development residential roads to 20 miles an hour and what I confirm in this report is that is in, in fact what we will do um, through the tools we have available which is our design guides and, and, and standards that we require development developers to work towards so that policy change is put in, in place so a new sites are will be designed to 20 mile an hour the motion also requested to retrospectively um, on um, new roads to be adopted, um, impose 20 mile an hour limits. And, and as, as the report sets out, that will not always be possible, but certainly we will rise to the challenge where we can possibly um, achieve such reductions, but it very much depends on a site by site basis. Um, um, finally, the report um, sets out the objections received to recent consultations to introduce new 20 mile an hour zones, uh, see Appendix B, um, and, and this relates to proposals for Barton, Somersham, Godmanchester and Duxford, so members are asked to um, consider those objections um, in line with the recommendations in the report. Thank you very much, David. Um, I'm actually going to start off myself by saying, uh, as, as chair of the, the 20 mile an hour working group, how happy I was to see it being a cross party working group and how nice it has seemed to see that everybody has understood the importance of this to our communities. And I think we all know that the stats now that even a one mile an hour reduction in speed cuts collisions by 6% and just how important that can be from people 20 to 30 cuts pollution by 30%. So I really do welcome this coming forwards. Um, I know a number of our parishes and areas will be looking forward to applying for these schemes in February when the 
the period opens. Um, I, I know in my area already, I've got people asking for it under LHIs and are uh, waiting for bade breath for when they can then apply under the, the new 20 mile an hour scheme. So that's really good. I also really welcome our um, removal of the 24 mile an hour mean speed requirement, which I think to so many parishes and areas just seemed counterintuitive. So I'm really happy that we've managed to find a, a sensible way forwards on that one. But let me open it up to comments and questions. Um, who do I have to start? Councillor Maguire, I believe. Also. Thank you, Chair. I just want to add to what oh, you said. Sorry. Oh, I, sorry. I do apologise. Uh, before I do that, um, we, members, we've received comments from Mr Jeremy Shepherd that have been circulated to the committee, and I'll ask Democratic Services to read out first. Apologies for that. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this is a statement from um, in support of the proposed 20 mile an hour scheme in God Manchester. I have lived in West Street for many years. Um, the vision is to make the road safer, is stated in God Manchester's neighbourhood plan. This received 96% support in our 2017 referendum. Since then, our town council has repeatedly rejected requests to use some of the approximate £1.5 million of community infrastructure levy share allocated to us from the Romans Edge development for measures to address traffic hazards to pedestrians and cyclists. These hazards have inevitably increased because of the extra traffic. Our town council has even voted for a vexatious complaint against me for repeatedly asking them to acknowledge residents' concerns and to start using our still for the um, vision we voted for in the referendum. The parishes of Buckton, Little Paxton and Kimbolton have all allocated their still for traffic calming or pedestrian crossings. In two online surveys, the residents of uh, Reading overwhelmingly asked for their still to be spent on traffic calming and pedestrian crossings. 87 signature West Street petition for pedestrian crossing received no support at all from our town and district councillors. The signatory has included 65 residents of the Oak Tree Court and Chestnut Retirement Apartments. I welcome the county's 20 MPH proposal, which will at last help create a safer environment, which so many of our residents voted for in 2017. Jeremy Shepherd. Thank you very much. I'd now like to invite Councillor Graham Wilson to address the committee. And Graham, I'm, I'm sorry for almost forgetting you there, but please go ahead as local member for God Manchester. That's okay, Chairman. And um, thank you, for the committee, for the opportunity to uh, address you this afternoon. Um, Alan, this is my Dragon's Den pitch for the 20 mile an hour speed, speed, speed limit proposal in God Manchester. Uh, I'm delighted that Jeremy Shepherd is supporting the scheme. I'm not going to comment on some of his other accusations because I think they are best dealt with separately. Um, the chair has described the benefits of 20 mile an hour schemes. So I'm not going to repeat those, but just to emphasize one or two things in the officer's report, you can see that the local district councillors support the scheme as do the town council who submitted the original LHI bid. And within the LHI bid, they expressed their willingness to put in their money to um, fund the part of the work. The consultation did only result in three objections and the report describes the objections and the officer's response. The responses on the local Facebook page have generally been very positive. During the last five years, there have been over 30 accidents inside the proposed zone boundary. Not all accidents have been at junctions and there have been several given a serious rating. I was concerned that drivers wouldn't slow down quickly from the 60 mile an hour limit to 20 mile an hour, but and suggested that buffer zones of 40 miles an hour would be appropriate. But now I've been reassured that the, all the zones will be within the existing 30 mile an hour zones. So drivers should have slowed down by the time they meet the new 20 mile an hour limit. The town council already has an MVAS uh, camera, which you kindly funded in a previous M, uh, LHI bid round. And it does move that camera around the town so that the town council and drivers are aware when they are speeding. In addition, there's a very active speed watch group which monitors and reports speeds to the, the police. Unfortunately, as uh, David has described, the scheme cannot be applied at the moment to unadopted roads. 
We have a large 1,000 home estate in Gomenchter, which will be outside of this, this scheme. Hopefully, the developer will be asked to make the roads 20 miles an hour before those roads are adopted by the county council. And finally, my only regret is that the county council doesn't have the budget to implement any physical traffic calming measures. I think this is something which county council should look at in the future if there is a need and local support. So in conclusion, please note the objections, but approve the scheme as proposed by officers on the grounds that it will significantly improve safety for road users and pedestrians. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Uh, Wilson, that was a, a very good Dragon's Den pitch there. Uh, can I open up to any members that have any questions or comments? First on my list from before, I believe I have Councillor Maguire. Thank you, Chairman. It'll be brief. I just wanted to express my gratitude to the member working group for the work that they've done and for the um, decision of this committee to change the policy, because I have to say, and for years and years, I never understood this uh, mean speed of 24 miles per hour and less. It just didn't make any sense to me, given it was a guideline. I understand why highways officers pushed it, but it was a guideline, but it always seemed to be that whenever it came to committees for proposals for changing it, it seemed to be not guidelines, but set in stone. So I'm just so grateful. It's taken a long time, and I'm glad to be sitting here seeing us bring that change in, which makes, for me, every bit of common sense. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Maguire. Councillor Howe. Thank you, Chairman. Well, Chairman, um, I was one of the co-sponsors of the notice of motion went to Council on this issue. Um, I'm going to speak slightly parochial, but at the same time, I hopefully, if you don't mind, it'll be show. Um, Camborne's up and ready and just waiting to go. We have our own money. We want to do it. And Camborne, and this should be something that all people should be quite interested, is self-contained. There are only really two roads into Camborne. Now, the one problem that we have is, of course, that some of the roads are not adopted. So I do think that when we go forward and we look at doing this and we do have places which are not adopted, like the large housing development in um, uh, uh, God Manchester and what's happening in Campbell, we should make provisions straight away for including those and any other roads in that particular area. So we don't have to re come back to the, uh, go through the process of publicizing these new roads and one thing or another. And I do think that we should look carefully how we're going to do that. So any new town or any new village, we all have new little developments they are automatically, and we don't lose out on a trip with regards to um, the roads can be 30 miles an hour, but the rest of the village is 20. But the other thing I always like to charge the officers to, if you don't mind, Chairman, is as quickly as possible, Camborne is up and ready and waiting, and we have the money. We don't have to rely upon the county. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Howell. I will ask all other councillors to please try and uh, avoid championing your own scheme, because otherwise we will be here till seven o'clock. I know that we all have many schemes we are passionate about. So please, please try and keep it in the generics and don't disadvantage those councillors who are not members of the committee. Uh, but let me pass over next to Councillor Sanderson, who I believe is on my list. Thank you, Chair. Um, to pick up on the point Councillor Howell and Councillor Wilson made, if you look at paragraph 2.13, it says we'll use, um, um, maybe it's a long paragraph, I do, but I searched section 38 agreements to ensure that new developers um, implement the 20 mile an hour speed limit. That's the same process we use to get um, our new estates adopted. And it takes years, it takes decades in some cases. And we actually hold a, 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 um, a bond or the developers lodge a bond with us if they don't complete the works on time we can call that in i've never actually known that happen certainly not in in my division um we have a very big development not far from here without being too parochial how can we wield is not adopted at all and it's some way off and we can't have a 20 mile an hour speed limit there so um i'm not sure when we actually enforce these agreements and if we don't i'm not sure that we can compel developers to actually start this process in the first place i think we need to get that uh, sorted if we can thank you very good points there made there, Ms. Uh, Councillor Sanderson. Councillor, do you? Thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, I um, 
have been a member of the working group and I was pleased to be a member of the group. I think we did really good uh, body of work. And as you said, we were quite good at uh, doing two things, which we haven't managed to do here too well. Today, uh, one of them anyway, not being broker, we actually were looking at the bigger picture, which I think was a good thing to do. Um, and secondly, we worked together as, as a group of people rather than a group of dis, uh, disjointed councillors. So I think we've, we've come up generally with a good body of work on it. Um, it's difficult with the non-adopted areas because I've got two um, areas in my uh, patch, which I'm not going to make a pitch for because they were both adopted and came, both are still non-adopted and both had 20 mile an hour limits on them. So I think it's a matter of trying to get the uh, our colleagues at both county and um, uh, planning authorities at the districts to actually make sure that these can be brought in as part of the planning process rather than trying to do them afterwards, which is what uh, we have been doing in Camborne and indeed in uh, certain parts of uh, um, Alconbury World, etc. So uh, I think I think it's important to do that. But I think the, the general thing we brought forward here is good, is well recommended. And I was happy to work on it, happy to support it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor G. And um, I will make the point that um, I am very happy to take away that uh, those comments about unadopted roads and to um, have a have a good look at those and a good think about them because you're right, it is a problem. Councillor yeah, Mills, the point of information about the um, local. Um, Sorry, speed limits on unadopted roads. They're private land and unenforceable. So it's all, it's only a voluntary measure. I think uh, uh, Dave Allett can possibly confirm that. that Councillor I think what the other councillors are putting words into their mouth they're talking about is getting them adopted, though, so then a speed limit can be enforceable. Um, am I, Councillor Jew, is that roughly... Well, that, well, that's the thing. But as, as Councillor Sonson's already said, that's easier said than done. But it doesn't mean we, just because it's difficult doesn't mean we shouldn't try and do it. Right, Councillor Mills, I'll let David confirm, but they're, they, they're unenforceable when they're not adopted. Oh, what are the chances, sorry, Chair, I've jumped in there. What are the chances of even an adopted road having a 20 hour, mile hour speed limit enforced? Police don't have the resources to do it anyway, do they? But sorry, I jumped in. <laughs> Councillor Sanson. Okay. Uh, do I have anybody further with any comments on this one? Who have I? Councillor Sharp. Sorry. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I broadly support this. Um, certainly 2.2 and, and 2.3. I, I, I raised this last night at a parish council meeting, you know, just giving them a brief on what was happening today. And it bordered between laughter and incredulity about the 24 mile an hour mean limit. They just didn't understand it as I, I understand, you know, obviously it's been there before, but um, it just, in my opinion, it just, you know, I agree with the working group. It doesn't make um, sense, but that that's my. Then, then I look, we've got 2.2, 2.3s 2 in the paper, actually, because if you look on page one, three, the next page, one through one, we've got a 2.3 as well. And I just wanted to mention that. And, and again, I, I'm totally in favour of what we're trying to do. Um, and I know budgets are tight, um, but looking at the proposed spend there, 100 for this current year and then 150, 150, Looking at then 2.4, it costs about 15,000 for each um, scheme. I know there's parish council contributions, presumably, um, but we're judging by what you, you were saying, Chair, earlier, we're going to have a lot of disappointed people out there if we get a massive flood of, of applications. Councillor Sharp, can I, can I draw your attention to the fact that this paper was actually published before we had the results of the uh, Transforming Cities Fund? Oh, okay. So there is now further funding that should be coming towards this in the county-wide speed reductions. Oh, okay. So right. That will hopefully help things because you are right. There are so many people that want this. That, mm. the, yeah. um, I fear any money we put into this will get used up no matter how much it is. But, and the uh, last question, um, is similar to the LHI bids where it's done on a district basis, is this going to be done on a county basis, this pond, pot, or is it, or we haven't yet decided that, or is it going to go revert to a, I know it's more difficult with it to do it on a district basis. But. Um, I think the uh, transforming cities funding and, and how we best allocate that is a discussion I'd propose for the members working group. That's going to come back to something. We'll, we'll get that information at some yeah, stage. Happy, yeah, happy to take that one away yeah. and continue to work that. I believe that the working group still will be reforming to discuss a few other things as things continue. Do I have anybody else on there? Can I read my vice chair's handwriting? Uh, I don't believe so. Brilliant. Thank you very much, um, everybody, for your for your. Uh, comments and feedback there. So to bring this to a close, the committee is asked to A, note the update on progress from the member working group, 
B, agree the speed limit policy changes set out in paragraph 2.2 and 2.3. Um, and actually, I, I will take your point there, Councillor Sharp, but there are 2.2, 2.3s. So maybe we can clarify which 2.3 there. Um, and C, agree the prioritisation framework in Appendix A. And D, determine the objections received to the proposed installation of various 20 mile speed restrictions in Appendix B to approve the proposed speed limit orders as advertised and inform objectors accordingly. Can I take that by affirmation or does anyone have any disagreement? That looks passed by affirmation. So thank you very much, everyone. Item eight is an updated report on the active travel design guide and the project manager, Simon Manville, will prevent, present this report. So Simon, over to you. Thank you, Chair. This, um, this paper provides a short background which explains the scope of the design guide, uh, is to, which is to provide guidance on the implementation of active travel routes. It will focus on rural and semi-rural uh, areas, addressing the overlap with existing uh, public rights of way networks, supporting designers when it comes to material choices, design layouts, processes for implementing new active travel routes and for making changes to existing uh, public rights of way. The paper also explains um, that we have received a considerable amount of input from a variety of teams across the council, um, ensuring we are aligned with the emerging active travel strategy for Cambridgeshire, ensuring that the guide is going to be suitable for adoption by partner organisations. The process of consolidating the input from, the wide, from a wide range of sources with differing priorities has emphasised the importance uh, that design choices will have. With this in mind, it is proposed that a cross-party member working group is set up to review the draft and input into the guide. And additionally, stakeholder engagement will be taking place for six weeks, gathering further input um, via the Cambridge Local Access Forum, uh, as well as um, at least 26 other statutory consultees and local access groups. Um, there is also a need for some of the technical aspects um, to be met with comments uh, from each of the technical disciplines um, to consider implementation and future maintenance. So with this, with this in mind, um, we ask the committee just to recognise the um, progress and challenges to get to date uh, and approve the formation of a cross-party member working group to review the draft design guide and feedback to the um, Highways and Transport Committee and agree the proposed planned activities for stakeholder engagement. Thank you very much, Simon, and thank you for your work on this. I know it's something that started actually, um, I believe, from Councillor King's comment in one of these committee meetings, but has grown to be a, a much larger piece of work and something that I believe we very much need. Uh, unfortunately, I don't believe that Councillor King is here today, otherwise he would be the first one asking for questions. Um, but um, it, I do believe we actually have a public question on this one, though, so I'll hand over to the Democratic Services Manager to read that one. Thank you, Chair. Um, this is from John Morris on behalf of Hunting, Hunting Cheer Walking and Cycling Group. Uh, and it is as follows. Hunts Walking and Cycling Group was established in 2019 to support active and sustainable travel in Huntingtonshire. We have almost 1,900 members on our Facebook group. In response to a question asked on behalf of the group at the Council's Highways and Transport Committee on the 4th of November 2021, the chairman confirmed that the new administration is a very significant commitment to active travel. It's therefore particularly disappointing that little progress has been made to date in delivering active travel schemes in Huntingdonshire. One of the active travel schemes proposed by um, Camps County Council was a restriction on motor traffic over the medieval bridge from God Manchester to Huntingdon. In November 2022, we carried out a poll on both God Manchester Living and Huntingdon Facebook groups asking the following question. Should Cams County Council carry out consultation on the future of the medieval town bridge? The proposal, one, to close the br bridge to motor traffic five days a week from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday to Friday. Two, buses and blue light vehicles permitted to use the bridge at all times. 
Three, any restriction on motor traffic on a six to 12 month trial basis. Four, Huntingdonshire District Council to use CPE powers and AMPR technology to enforce it. Five, public realm improvements to enhance Huntingdon Riverside Park and Post Street, God Manchester. 20 plus mile an hour speed limit on the bridge. As at 30th November 2022, 485 people voted with more than three and four respondents being in favour of the County Council proceeding to a formal, formal consultation on the future of the medieval bridge. Although these poll results are not a statistically reliable sample, it does provide useful information to help inform future decision making. Many people also submitted constructive comments for both for and against the proposal. In late summer 22, an informal group of God Manchester residents carried out a sample survey of residents' views and received some 120 responses with a significant number supporting a reduction in motor traffic through God Manchester. They submitted a 44 page report of their findings to God Manchester Town Council in response to the God Manchester Transport Plan published by uh, the Town Council in spring 2022. So the question is the medieval bridge from God Manchester to Huntingdon has been identified by the County Council as a potential location for an active travel scheme. This is supported by aims and objectives contained within the Council's draft active travel strategy, LC WIP. It, Huntingdon shares District Council local plan to 2020-36, Huntingdonshire District Council's draft Huntingdon master plan 2022, and the Huntingdon and God Manchester Town Council's neighbourhood plans. All Camps County Council commit to carrying out a formal consultation on the future of the medieval town bridge with a view to bringing forward an active travel scheme. Thank you very much, Chair, and I believe a, a written response to that question. Oh, sorry, Simon, do you want to respond to that? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, currently, no funding has been allocated to undertake formal consultation, and officers believe um, that further feasibility work is needed uh, prior to consultation. Um, no funding has been allocated to undertake the feasibility work at this point in time. Um, I am advised that the Huntingdonshire Transport Strategy will be considered at the March Highways and Transport Committee. Um, it's therefore proposed that officers um, will engage with the Huntingdonshire Walking and Cycling Group outside of this meeting on this issue. Thank you very much, Simon. So, members, do I have any uh, questions or comments? Um, and in the absence of Councillor King, I'll start off then with Councillor Goldsack. Yeah, I'll borrow his jacket. I'll borrow his jacket for the day, but that's another matter. Um, two points on this, which is largely very, very uh, good. First point is in 1.1, you say that the, this came from a Highways and Transport Committee meeting on the 7th of December 2021. So that's a year today, tomorrow, isn't it? Yeah. And then a little bit further down, he says that nothing happened until June. I'd be wondering why. Just what, what happens? Now, I'm not saying nothing happened. I know nothing happens. I know how busy you officers are. But I think it's very important to the public that we tell them why it was decided to do something in December 2021, and then we then we perceived to be doing nothing until June 2022. Second, oh, well, if you want to answer that one, I'll come back. I, th I think I can take that one as well to say that I believe it was raised by Councillor King in the meeting, but it wasn't added to the agenda plan. The correct way to take those things is via spokes. So I don't believe it actually got started until it got added to the agenda plan later on. The second point I would like to make then is um, the local transport authority is actually the CPCA. And they're not mentioned in this document. That's a little bit of a worry. Is that a fair comment? I, I don't think that's... We, we are the Highways Authority, Councillor Goldsacks. We're not the Transport Authority, but we are the Highways Authority. Um, so dealing with so, those, act, so, sorry, so it's you on your to... definition of active travel then, isn't it? All I'm saying... Look, I, I, I largely support this. What I'm saying is, as the local transport authority, I, I'm coming from a town that's had an active travel project of combined funding, CCC and uh, combined authority, kiboshed because of the length of time it took and because of a lack of cohesive work. All I'm saying is once bitten, twice shy, 
I think the CPCA need to be involved in it. Maybe there's a route in for them with one of their officers on the multi-person work, on the multi-working group, can't say it. But I'm just saying that it's not mentioned in the document. I'll let Simon get back in on that one. Thank you. Um, so we are we are engaging with them um, through, so there is an active tra uh, active travel strategy also coming to the board in March, which um, is going to be a, I think it's a child document it's described as, um, of uh, the, um, sorry, you may have to, <laughs> to help me out, Steve, perhaps. No. Um, yeah, I believe it's a child document of the local transport and connectivity plan. <laughs> that's that's what the one I was struggling to. Uh, so it to is referenced in the document. So, so, um, so we are engaging from that point point of view, and um, we are looking to connect this um, uh, this this guide uh, with the strategy, so that everything is is aligned. Um, and I think I did mention um, at a point where we're looking to to align everything with partner organisations. So that is. Um, also uh, reference to 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 the CPCM. And I, and I welcome your comments. Um, if I could just ask you in particular, Simon, and, and, and the team involved in this, we just need to make sure that we're in sync with the CPCA on this and not face any barriers down the line. That's what I'm saying, because everything in this I support. But I'm just trying to make sure here that we don't fall victim like so on fell victim because a bus company wouldn't take a bus to a train station. Active travel fell apart. That was it. Thank you, Councillor Goldstones. I will reassure you that we do work very closely with the CPCA on this. The, the fact that they are the transport provider and we're the highways authority means that we are constantly working with them on, on all of these different bits, but we will very much take that on board. So thank you for your feedback there. Councillor Mills. Oh, no, not Councillor Mills. Uh, Councillor Shaler. Thank you, Chair. I, I just have a very quick uh, comment on this. And this is an ongoing process. And we've got here with a lot of input from members of the public, from the equestrian groups and various groups across Cambridgeshire. Uh, public rights of way, we have as many miles and public rights away as we have of carriageway, extremely important for not only active transport in, in the way that we think about it, but health and well-being and tourism and uh, rural lifestyle. So I very, very much not only welcome this, but would welcome comments from the public ongoing to help us with this progress. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Shadow. Do I have anybody else? Councillor Sharp is waving. Just very briefly, um, sort of broadly support the whole the the, the whole idea, and uh, as we brought it forward, um, and really, yeah, support setting up of the working group, which um, hopefully will do some detailed work and then come back to to this committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Sharp. Okay, so if there's no further questions or comments, the committee is asked to A, recognize the progress and challenges to date as detailed in the update, B, approve the formation of a cross-party member working group to review the draft design guide and feedback to the Highways and Transport Committee, and C, agree the proposed planning activities for stakeholder engagement. Can I take that by affirmation again? No disagreements? Brilliant. Thank you very much, everybody, and thank you, Simon. Um, item 10, we up to, no, item nine, where's item nine? As I yeah. oh, Excuse me one second. Is that the finance? Is this finance monitoring report? It's the next one. Sorry, I've got a slight change thing there. So the next item is the finance monitoring report, and Sarah Hayward will introduce this report. Sarah, I believe you're on Zoom, so over to hey. you. Thank you, Chair. Um, this is a finance monitoring report as at the end of October. Overall place and sustainability is forecasting a 1.1 million overspend on revenue. The main areas with forecast variances um, within it, within highways and transport, are street lighting, which is 234k pressure overspend, and park and ride, which is a 637k pressure overspend. On the capital side, um, the changes since last month um, is there's further slippage in the following areas: local infrastructure improvements, safety schemes, DTSA highways schemes 
carriageway and footway maintenance, St Ives local imp um, improvement, um, and development for highways infrastructure. That's all I was going to say. Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much, Sarah. Uh, members, do I have any questions or comments on this one? Councillor Sharp. Thank you, Chair. I've got one specific question, and it's on page 164. It's in respect of the highways maintenance spend. We, we've got a budget of 10.65 million. Actual spend to date is just under 3 million, so we've still got 7 million to spend, yet we're the, the forecast out, ver, out turn variance is only 40,000. So um, I, I would have thought a lot more of the maintenance would have happened in the summer months when obviously the weather's better. I know obviously maybe in the winter months you've got more potholes caused, caused by water, et cetera, et cetera. But, uh, but I would have thought... Um, Majority, and I, I may be wrong. I stand to be corrected that 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 um, a lot of it, majority of our spend will be during the summer month when the winter's better and the um, tarmac sets better, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm just really surprised by that figure, Sarah. Um, yes, um, it's probably best for Sue Proctor to um, respond to that. I think. Thank you. So this is October's outturn and we do have a delay in the processing of the finances as they come through from the contractor once works have been done. What we do within the service is we forecast and programme those works and the anticipated spend is as presented here that we do anticipate that we'll be spending to programme within the current financial year. So one very quick question coming back. Um, the spend's on a cash basis rather than accruals. It's a cash paid basis. Yeah. Um, the, the, so should I answer this? The, the spend is a spend out the door, but at year end we will accrue for anything where we haven't where the, where the works have been completed, but the spend hasn't actually happened. Thank you very much for that clarification, Councillor. Do you? Just for my guidance, and I may have missed it in the paper somewhere, the park and ride overspend says there's pressure on the guided bus maintenance for the temporary fence, and also an the excess charge income has not recovered to pre-COVID levels. Have we any idea of the split in the 637,000 there? If we haven't, I'll quite happily hear it afterwards. I think if we can take that away and bring yeah. that More back. Than happy with that, yeah. be great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Do I have anybody else? No. Okay. It's hard to tell what's a scratch of the head and what's a hand up these days. Um, brilliant. In that case then, so the committee is asked to note the contents of the report. Can I take that by affirmation? Brilliant. And now we get to item 10, uh, which is the final item on the agenda. Uh, and that's uh, the agenda plan um, and appointments. The Democratic Services Manager will take us through the agenda plan. So, Jan, over to you. Thank you. I've got nothing to add to the agenda plan, but I would just remind members of the... Um cross-party member working group for the active travel design guide and so far i've received interests from councillor sharp and councillor mcguire so um we'll be looking for nominations from both Lib Dem and labor and independent groups i'll come back with another nomination from our group yeah and I'm sure we'll do the same from ours. I'm sure there's lots of people interested in working on that one. I myself am. Um, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Are there any other comments or questions from the committee on that? No. In that case, then, um, I believe that that is noted. And that concludes today's business. So thank you very much, everyone. Um, thank you to those members of the press and public who have joined us in person or watching the live stream. And... I now declare this meeting at closed. Merry Christmas to everyone. I hope you all have a have a good festive period. Thank you.